Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. It is Drew here from Alone Fox and we are gonna be taking a little minor detour from the holiday content because I'm gonna be bringing you guys today 10 easy DIY bedroom updates, hacks, just upcycles you could do to your bedroom, whether it be new furniture pieces, DIYs, or just tips that I've come up with over the years that I'm gonna be sharing with you guys in one compiled video. And I do wanna mention that some of these are renter friendly and some of them are not renter friendly, but they're totally renter friendly in the sense that if you wanted to do it in your apartment that you rent, you would just have to go back and paint or go back and patch up some holes, fix it when you leave, which I think is totally worth it because if I'm living somewhere for a year, I wanna live in a place that I love for a year and then spend one or two days kind of fixing it up back to how I bought it originally or I guess rented it originally and then give it back to the person. You can probably find something in here that you can definitely add to your bedroom. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I put on this list was creating an accent wall. Now, as you can see behind me here, I have this green board and batten wall that I created. It was so easy to do. It probably took me about three hours to create, and I've done two board and batten walls so far in my apartment, both in my bedroom, and then also in Marie's bathroom, which totally made an impact on her bathroom. It really just honestly made it look a lot larger. And a wall like this does seem like it could be very intimidating, but I swear to you guys, it is super, super simple, especially if you know somebody that knows how to use power tools or if you have ever used power tools before, all you have to do is just do measurements, simple, simple measurements, cut your boards down, stick them and glue them up to the wall and you are good to go. Then you paint it and you have a brand new accent wall. But I wanted to share with you a couple that I found over on Pinterest that I thought were really, really cool ideas. These are ways that you can use a very similar board, but you can do it in a very geometric or abstract or just kind of irregular way to make a interesting accent wall. I'm sure that all of us at one point have painted a wall in our home whether it be your bedroom or your living room. And it always is a very impactful, I guess, way to add a bit of color to a space. I think like the newest, funnest way to add it is to paint over the top of some boarded detail, which just instantly elevates the look of a room. Like if you guys can see behind me, I feel like this board and button wall here just totally elevates the space. It transforms it so much and it was not hard at all. So that's my first hack is to introduce some form of boarded accent wall that you could then paint over and kind of change for years to come. My second tip is to install some faux sconces. So as you can see up here on my wall, I have two different sconces here. These are sconces that I purchased on Amazon and I will link them below for you guys if you are curious. And what I did was I just mounted them to the wall as the instruction shows. So I didn't have to get any electrical box put in or anything like that. And once they are mounted in place, all I did was installed two different puck lights, which simply you just add some batteries into the puck lights, drop them into the top there and you have a remote control, which is typically over here on my bedside table and I could turn them on and off with the remote. And the puck lights last over a hundred hours, which is great, just on a couple of batteries. So every time that it does die, you just pop in a couple new batteries. You can even get rechargeable ones, which I thought was a really fun idea because you can just easily recharge those, pop them back in your puck lights when they die out. And you have sconces, which cost a fraction of the price than an electrician would cost to come and install them for you. So that's a really great DIY hack. I've seen it all over TikTok, people installing puck lights where they want to actual light and then you can just easily go ahead and control it with your remote control just super easy and simple Tip number three is one that I do every single time I do a bedroom makeover. And I don't know if it's just me, but I just get bored of hardware all the time. And I think because I always see brand new hardware, whether it be I'm watching a, a person's bedroom makeover, or I see somebody's haul video where they got new hardware, or I'm browsing a website and I see their hardware options. I just love changing up my hardware. I think it really refreshes any furniture piece. So for example, you can easily update hardware on drawers. So you can get drawer pulls, drawer knobs. I've done cup handles before. You can also go ahead and get a really statement knob. Let's just go ahead and say that you have two simple Ikea nightstands on either side of your bed. They are kind of basic, but you know, they do the job. A great way to elevate these is to go to a place like Anthropology or somewhere that has some really unique handles or knobs and you know, splurge on a really cute handle that can elevate that nightstand and instantly transform it into something that looks like it cost a lot of money when all you really did was just pop in a new handle, which is so simple and easy to do. So I think elevating your hardware is a great way 
to do that. And I actually have an entire section on my Amazon storefront, which is always linked in the description of my videos. You guys should definitely check that out in relation to this video because it gives you a breakdown of all my favorite goods throughout my home. So I have a hardware section, I have a lighting section, I have bedding, I have room decor, I have faux plants, everything you could imagine is over on my Amazon storefront. And I do have a section for unique hardware. Now tip number four is one that I've always wanted to do, but I've actually never done before. Um, and I think it's just such a cute idea. Now, if you are one to struggle with painting, let's just say that you don't want to paint a wall in your room because you're scared you might not like the color. It is definitely a commitment that you have to do because once you change the paint color, if you don't like it, you have to change it again or paint it back to the original color. So I thought a really cute way to add like a pop of color to your space or just elevate your room is to go ahead and paint the door. Now in my bedroom right over here, I have a really, really cute door handle on my door and I just love the way that it looks white. I've seen so many of my friends over on Instagram paint their doors. I know that my friend Xenia from Style It Pretty Home, she painted like all the doors throughout her home, a very light kind of grayish tan tone. And I just love how impactful that minor little color change was to the doors. It really elevated her space so much. Let's just say you really love mustard yellow, but painting a whole entire wall in your bedroom, um, mustard yellow can be super overpowering. So Painting something like the door a mustard yellow is a great way to kind of get that color in the space without having to commit to a huge surface area. And I always forget that you have the option to paint a door. Like you could paint really anything you want to. So keep that in mind. If you want to add a nice pop of color, add it on your door as opposed to all of the walls in your space. See if you like it. And if you do, maybe you could transfer it over to the wall and then paint the door a different color or go back to the original. So that's another option as well. A super easy hack to change up a bedroom is to easily change your colorful decor elements. So whenever I do a space, I typically try to keep a lot of the furniture pieces in the neutral realm. So I have a black dresser in my bedroom. I have some black accent chairs. I have some simple wooden nightstands, a wooden bed. That way I can go in with brand new bedding. I can go in with new vases, new decor, new whatever I wanna add additional throw blankets, throw pillows. And that's where I can add brand new pops of color. So as seasons change for fall time, I I love adding warm tones like oranges and yellows and purples and such like that. And then maybe in the springtime, I wanna add some more pastel tones to my space. And that's an easy way to make sure that you're never breaking the bank and having to buy new furniture pieces or having to buy new curtains or new rug. If you're living on a budget, one of my top tips is to definitely ensure that a lot of your main furniture pieces are in the neutral realm. That way you can go in with pops of color through your decor, like your pillows, your blankets, your uh, vases, your wall accents, your wall art, whatever it is, those are very easily changeable and updatable, spray paintable, DIYable, where you can change the color easily and just freshen up the space with like a couple of new colorful accents, I guess you could say. You guys totally know what I'm saying. I'm kind of rambling on in my head, but let's move on to the next one. Now, if you do want to incorporate a brand new furniture piece in your space, let's say you want a new accent chair, you need a new side table, you need some new nightstands, I highly recommend checking out your local thrift store. I have done so many thrift flips here on my channel, which I will pop up on the screen for you guys. I hope this inspires you a little bit to check out your local thrift store because it is such an easy way to introduce a whole new furniture piece at a fraction of the price. And the other thing I love about thrift stores too is that nobody is ever going to have that same piece. I feel like it's hard to come across like a multi multiples of an item throughout a thrift store. So when I go, I look for unique pieces, things that I can upcycle for sure. That's always something that I do is I upcycle every single piece I get it from a thrift store. That way it's one of a kind. It's something that only you have. Nobody else has this piece. They might have the original, but they don't have that updated piece. So some examples that I've done in the past is that really cool bathroom vanity. If you guys remember, I upcycled that. I literally found that on the street, which was so exciting. I also did that recent dirt covered lamp, which sounds odd, but it ended up turning out so cute and I added some clay handles to it. Another super simple upcycle and that lamp only cost me about $15 to create. Consider heading out to your thrift stores, finding some pieces you can upcycle and transforming your space with those. I never ever knew how much window treatments could impact a space until I did my bedroom. I've done a ton of curtains and past makeovers in my roommate's room. We did them in the living room. We did them in past room makeovers, in my past bedroom. But just this space in particular, what I'm looking at right here, it was absolutely insane how the before and after of these curtains 
just change the space so much. I cannot believe how much elevating the height of my rod and also widening out like the, the panels themselves to go past the windows just made the wall appear so much taller and so much larger. And overall, it just gave it a luxury look. Like when you guys see the before and after of these curtains, you're gonna be like, wow, that looks incredible because there's really no way that it looks bad. Like I'm, I think it looks so, so good. So I have to back that up and say, I really love the way that the curtains turned out in this space. And I did keep in mind that arched window as well. So that's why I did the long curtain rods as opposed to skinnier ones across every single window, because I felt like it kind of drawed your eye around the top of the room. And again, just elevated it with those long curtains. Moving on to my next tip. This is one that I get questions about all the time. And I always get emails asking, what is the one thing I need in this space to bring it all together? Um, in my Lone Fox family email, I go through that all the time and I try to respond to a lot of your guys' messages over there. And a lot of times people are missing a rug in their space. They have space for a rug. However, there is no rug. And a rug truly can ground an area. It can add a little bit of color. It can add texture. It can add pattern. It can add interest. It could be that one factor that you might be missing throughout your space and picking a rug can totally be a challenge for sure. So when I pick out a rug, I honestly pick it kind of first off in the process because then I like to pull colors from the rug to decorate the room with. That's one of the first things that I try to choose and then I kind of base everything else off of the rug colors. So for my roommate's room, for example, we did a dark navy rug, but within that rug, there were some lighter blue tones, there were some tans, there were some neutral tones as well. So I knew that I wanted to go in with a moody vibe for that space and I found a bench that totally matched the same exact color as that light kind of bluish periwinkle tone in the rug and that just accented it right back. I added some gray which was also found in the rug. I added some dark charcoal within the bedding. Then we had a lot of brass touches as well which went back to that tan color. So all around I try to pull the colors from my rug and emulate them and just try to place them throughout my bedroom. You guys also saw me buy a vintage Turkish rug for my bedroom and when I bought this rug I based a lot of my decor and styling elements off of this rug because there's a lot of natural tones in it. There's also a ton of green in it as well. So I knew I wanted a ton of plants. I already had my green accent wall, which paired perfectly with the rug, but all around it was a perfect fit for the space. And I just love the way that it turned out. And a rug might be something that you're missing in your space as well. Just make sure to get one that is an appropriate size that fits nicely and is not too overpowering. Our second to last tip here is to just update any old light fixtures. This is something that you could 1000% do in a rental. We did it in our rental. I actually kept all of the old lights as well. I basically have a large box in my garage that has everything that I've taken out of this apartment. I put it in that box and store it. That way when I go to leave this apartment, I can remove what I did, patch up any holes and take what was here prior and put it back. Updating a crusty, dusty old light fixture is 100% a change that you should do whenever you see one. Um, I know in my bedroom, I literally had one little light bulb in the ceiling. There was one light bulb and I added a full on like chandelier in here, which just instantly added such a professional look to the space. And I love that it turned out. So that's an option you should do. Here's my chandelier, it's right up here. And again, make sure to check out my Amazon storefront because I have an entire section on there that is designated for lighting. So I have so many different lights throughout that section that are my favorite ones that I've purchased for my own home home that I've used in makeovers or that I've just seen on Amazon that I really wanted you guys to see as well. And last but not least, I'm going to finish this one up pretty quickly because it is getting loud outside. This is just to add plants to your bedroom. Add plants to every single room in your home. I cannot stress enough how much a plant or even a faux plant just adds life to a space. I have a mixture of faux and real in my bedroom. As many of you guys know, I have my large bird of paradise over in the corner, but I also have a ton of faux or dried plants as well that I love introducing throughout my space. I have a little Christmas tree right here. I have a humongous olive tree over over here, which is faux as well. But plants truly do give your space a breath of fresh air. You guys have probably never seen me do a bedroom, a living room, a dining room, a bathroom without a plant in it. There is plants in every single space I ever designed because I truly do think they're very impactful. I personally think of a plant as a neutral color. Like if you have a neutral scheme, you could still have plants in your room and there is no green. It is a plant, it's not green. But that guys finishes off today's video. Those are my 10 bedroom DIY kind of updates that you could do to your very own space. Just elevate it a little 
little bit more than it already is or maybe transform it from its current state and add a little breath of fresh air. If you guys did see a video clip or a project within this video that you are kind of curious about, I will make sure to link every single resource below. They're all from past videos here on my channel, so I'll link those full ones below in case you maybe do want to build a Borton Batten wall or you do want to change out a light fixture. I will link those below for you guys and also make sure to check out my Amazon storefront because that is an area where I link so many items that I love for my space. I have things on lighting, I have bathroom fixtures, I have hardware, I have bedding, decor accents, faux plants, real plants. There's a ton of stuff over on my storefront so definitely check that out as well. And last but not least the sun is setting but do not forget to subscribe to my channel. I post brand new home decor and DIY content every single week and we're gonna have a lot of fun over the next couple weeks here on the channel. I have so much stuff planned for December so you're gonna want to make sure to stay tuned for that but I will catch you all in my next video. Have a great rest of your day. Bye guys!